from Washington, D.C. It's the Cube covering Dot Next Conference. Brought to you by Nutanix. We're back. Rachel Mushuar is here from Intel. She's the general manager and head of America's industry sales. And she's joined by Jason Kimry, who's the managing director of America sales at Intel. Folks, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you. All right, so Rachel, let's start with you. What, uh, first of all, this event, you know, you guys are partners with, with Nutanix. We'll get into that in a minute, but what's Intel doing here? What's the vibe of the event? event? What are you talking about? So there's a, a variety of things that we're talking about. First of all, Nutanix is a, a fabulous partner of ours, uh, but it's not just about the technology that Intel is supplying to Nutanix. And that's what's great about this event, is you see so many different business folks that are focused on what are the right outcomes for their businesses, and how do you start to use technology to solve business problems. And that's a big part of uh, what Intel is helping companies do. It's all about the digital transformation and how to keep pace with your competitors so that you don't fall behind or, or worse, fall off the Fortune 500 list like most companies have done. So Jason, how's that conversation translate into the discussions you're having with customers? You know, I think digital transformation, that topic is everywhere. And every, there isn't a company on the planet that isn't trying to figure out how to transform their business through digital. And at Intel, there's pretty much two ways that a company can, uh, can transform their business. Through, it's either through culture or through, through technology. And we see Intel playing a key role in being that technology enabler to a digital transformation strategy. So, and that's a big part of our conversations and our strategy uh, with Nutanix is how to make, enable companies to be more data driven, move towards a more on-demand infrastructure, be more secure, and really look at how we can help uh, companies adopt those technologies faster. And, frankly, how do we help them move more quickly, right? The average age of a company used to be about 60 years. The average age of a company today is less than 12 years old. Think about what that means from a digital transformation perspective and how fast companies have to move to adopt to what consumers are expecting. And that's a big part of uh, what we do. So Jason, I'm glad you mentioned data. And so Rachel, you were talking about digital transformation. It's kind of a buzzword that's thrown around, but when we unpack it, it seems like it's all about the data. You know, becoming data driven. Da digital means, means data, it means, we just saw Amazon buy Whole Foods. And and, and you would never think that a, a, a retailer would get into the grocery business like that, but data allows you to sort of jump these industry value chains. So I wonder if you could talk about digital disruption and the data relevance. So there's a, a variety of digital disruptions that are happening across every industry, whether you're you know, retail or you're a transportation company or you're a health and life sciences company. Data is at the heart of all of that and figuring out how do I address what my consumers are looking for in as close to real time as possible. How do you make those decisions just like that so that you can provide those answers back to your consumers? You know, Amazon, is it a retailer? Is it a supply chain company? Is it, it's all Content of- Content company. It's all of those things and a lot of companies are taking a step back saying, holy moly, how do we start to transform everything all at once? And how do we use technology to leapfrog where our competitors are, right? They, they don't want to be knocked off that Fortune 500 list. Who yeah, saw, yeah, go I think ahead. That's what's, there's just so many cool examples of where traditional mainstay companies are integrating digital and becoming data companies almost overnight. I mean, you look at John Deere. It's just one of these you know, old line agriculture company that's really now a data company. I mean, they're, they're applying analytics to, to help do more crop forensics and determine what the, the, right, the optimal time to plant. They're using IOT with the use of drones to survey fields. They're even using autonomous driving capabilities, in putting uh, sensors in directly into uh, to the equipment to, to make sure that they're planning within, uh, you know, driving large 120 foot wide piece of equipment to one inch of accuracy. You're just seeing incredible use of technology and it's all cent centered around better use of data to transform their I business. mean, John Deere comes up a lot. We hear that example. Do you right. feel like they're sort of a, a leading edge of the bell curve or is, are, are they sort of more mainstream now? I mean, they're certainly a mainstream company, but 
I feel like they're advanced in terms of their data, more advanced than the average bear with their data uh, usage. What's interesting about that is between now and 2018, the board of directors from all of the major companies out there will have digital transformation as part of their agenda. Probably about 60% of all of the companies that we talk to are talking about some level of digital trans, uh, transformation. So it's not just John Deere. You think about all of the big brands, especially with some of the big changes that are happening from a technology perspective. Whether it's autonomous driving, it's you know, the use of the, of the smartphones, right? Apple just celebrated, what, its 10th birthday for an iPhone. This is the least amount of change that any of us will ever see in our lifetimes, just because of how fast technology is moving. So, Jason, we, we, we've been interviewing Intel at I think every show we go to, the cloud shows, server storage, you know, across the board. How, how does Nutanix differentiate itself? How do you partner with them? We, you know, understand, of course, they've got the x86, but a lot of it's you know, software, uh, you know, the hooks that Intel's been bu building for a long time. We, can, can, can bring us a little bit inside some of the sausage making. Well, we've been talking about the, reimagining the data center for years, and I think what's been really cool about Nutanix is they really are bringing that concept to life and really reimagining the, uh, the data center platform. And I think what we've done is, through silicon and a lot of our enabling technologies, we've always tried to provision those up for our partners to build innovation on top of, and Nutanix has done as good of a job as anyone is really taking advantage of those capabilities and bringing them to their customer in a way that they can consume and digest quickly, implement quickly, and really start moving fast on a, di on a data center transformation strategy almost overnight. So you talk about the digital transformation. Mm -hmm. Nutanix is one of those leading indicators out there as a strategic partner for us of how do you help companies evolve to what they need to be to meet consumer demand? And using some of these amazing data center technologies and reimagining what the data center looks like, that's Nutanix. Yeah, it, it, Rachel is it, curious. You know, I, I said, I've yet to find a CIO that said they have a convergence challenge or issue. Uh, talked to lots of companies that are trying to figure out their cloud strategy, but it's more, how are they transforming to be more a software company? You know, I, I interviewed uh, you know, a, a large you know, financial services company that says we're going to be a software company that happens to deliver uh, the, these type right. of solutions. So you know, you know, what are those critical issues that you know, your customers are talking to? And, and yeah, how, how, does, how do you see Nutanix, you know, you, you've said they're helping with the digital transformation. You know, how, how do they get there and how do they do even more? So there's a, a variety of ways that Nutanix is really transforming that whole data center industry. And a big part of it is time to market. You know, one of the biggest roadblocks from, a, you know, from CIO's perspective, as you said, it's not about what they want to do, it's about how they go do it, and they start running up against a variety of roadblocks of, oh my gosh, that particular application stack isn't certified on this, or this software won't work on this hardware and all of a sudden, a project that should take three to six months is now over a year, right? Time kills all deals, and it includes, it also it, it, you know, kills all innovation. So with the Nutanix and Intel platform, that time to delivery is shrunk so dramatically, and you don't have to worry about certifying all of those different types of things, and when you go to an upgrade, it's invisible. Right, that's the way technology should be. It should just work. When you answer your phone, do you think about it not working? Yeah, I, I want to go back. You, you said that you know, 10 years ago was like the slowest that things will ever be if you look going forward. How do you find customers are keeping up with this? You know, you talk to just you know, continuous in, 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 you know, innovation, continuous change, you know, continuous updates coming. Uh, you know, we used to just know the TikTok of Intel and that made upgrades a little bit easier. Now, you know, it's a software world. How do you find customers are keeping up with it? How, how do they try? You know? So I think customers are struggling with how fast technology is moving. But one way to start to keep up with it is to use products like Nutanix. Right, it takes some of the guesswork out of a variety of things in your data center. So, how should we think about Nutanix inside of the Intel eco? I mean, Intel is the gold standard of how to build an ecosystem. Where does Nutanix fit? How should we think about this sort of new type of company well, inside think, that ecosystem? I think it starts with looking at them not as a hardware company as much as a software company. They are truly agnostic across the platforms that they deploy on. Their whole goal is to abstract 
the applications from the, from the hardware that it sits on, and I think really providing, let's call it cloud-like capabilities for an on-prem uh, on -prem environment. So I think that's a pretty big differentiator because they really have this software platform that runs on multiple Intel-based uh, hardware platforms, and our goal working with them is to really help proliferate that as quickly as we can because it really is, an, it creates an upgrade path and a, and a path toward transformation much quicker than was historically possible. So we call that, what you just described, cloud-like on-prem, is we call it true private cloud. Um, and, and you know, substantially mimicking the public cloud. We came up with that term because there were so many fake private clouds <laughs> out there. So, and you obviously, you see the growth in, in, in all these markets and the decline in many markets. You're seeing the public cloud explode. We see this notion of mimicking the public cloud on-prem as a huge growth area. Are you seeing the same thing? What kind of, can you add some yeah. color to that narrative? So, you know, when we talk to customers, again, across multiple industries, whether it's an energy industry, it's a uh, trans, uh, transportation industry, it's manufacturing, you name the industry, they're all struggling with the same thing, right? Yes, public cloud is exploding, but a lot of CIOs are taking a step back saying, hey, there's some part of my data that I want to keep absolutely inside of my private cloud. There's some data that I always want to click keep on-prem and there's some pieces that I want to put out to the public cloud. So we're, we're seeing a lot of companies kind of normalize back in that middle where the pendulum swung so far to the right of, hey, boom, public cloud. And now I think they're taking a step back from a privacy and security perspective saying, what's the happy medium here? Yeah, so, Please. Well, I, just, I, I think we, we just, public cloud, which we love, did an incredible job of making people aware of how quickly it, it was possible to deploy resources or deploy VMs very quickly in a way that was never possible before in an on-prem environment. Partners like Nutanix, and I would say Nutanix really led a, a lot of this, really bringing that public cloud capability to an on-prem environment. The application at rationalization and the application uh, you know, virtualization, a lot of those ca capabilities that were very simple in a cloud environment are now just as simple in an on-prem environment. That's why we see that normalization that Rachel So just when about. we thought this was a zero-sum game, it was like public cloud versus on-prem, IOT comes in and advances in connectivity and data. That's right. It's like a tide that lifts all boats. What are you guys seeing in IOT? Maybe you could make some comments there. Sure, so I think IOT is just beginning to catch the, the next wave. For, you know, for a while, folks have been talking about the Internet of Things and how it's going to help transform industries and how you can use sensors to detect everything from you know, or, uh, soil erosion as related to the John Deere to what are we doing for our, an average consumer who walks down uh, an aisle in your favorite retail store? How do we start to deliver them personalized messages? So IOT is again changing that game and moving up that sigmoid curve of change. And you go back to, look, today, right now, at this moment, it's the least amount of change that you'll see. In five minutes from now, there's going to be some other big tech announcement or some big evolution. And that's, the, that's kind of the beauty of where we sit in today's world. It, about every hundred years, we enter this big change or this big disruption and this one is going to be driven by compute, and Intel is all about compute. Are you guys paranoid? I Absolutely. think we're excited, <laughs> but yeah. paranoid as well. Only the paranoid survive. That's Absolutely. right, that's yeah. right. Yeah, we're, you know, this, this data explosion through IoT, it really fuels what Intel calls our virtuous cycle of growth. The more data, the more endpoints that, that, that hit the network, the more data that creates, the more requirement for yeah. data center oh, and data. I, I can totally agree. We, we used to say it was kind of customers that were the flywheel, and data is, the, is. the potential to be the flywheel for the next so we're, 10 we're, years. Yeah, to Rachel's point, we're excited. Data is the new oil, but the magic is going to be in how we refine that data. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say data is plentiful, but insights aren't. That's right. And those companies that can find those insights and gain a competitive advantage, and as you've been pointing out, both of you, Rachel and Jason, the cycles are so fast, it's, you know, one insight is not enough, it's not sufficient. You have to continuously iterate. Speed is the game. It is the game. And uh, you guys play that game well, so thanks. Yeah. Thanks very much for sharing your insights. Great yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. You're welcome, all right. Keep right there, everybody. Stu and I will be back 
right after this short break. This is theCUBE, we're live from DC at Nutanix.next. Be right back. <laughs>